Hello. In this session, we will be discussing the optimal scheduling for hydrothermal plants. That means when your system has a mixture of hydel and thermal plants. So in the problem of economic dispatch, what we saw was how to distribute the generation to various plants. So there only thermal plants were considered because we considered the fuel cost. So as opposed to thermal plants, hydel plants do not have any fuel cost because the input is water. So though there is a capital investment, in fact, capital investment in hydel plants is heavy because you have to construct a dam, a reservoir and all the uh, associated uh, civil infrastructure and also the plant, the operational costs are minimal as compared to a thermal plant. But we do have some constraint on the hydel plant because we have to consider what is the water available for production of energy. Okay, so we will now see how we can schedule the generation optimally between the hydel and thermal plants. Now, the main advantages of hydroelectric power are first, it's a renewable energy source. Okay, so every time there is rain, the water gets replenished. And the response is quick. You can have immediate response to fluctuations in uh, demand. And uh, it promotes guaranteed energy and price stability as the raw material is not subject to market fluctuations. So water is not traded in the market, unlike coal. Coal, which is the basis of uh, most thermal plants, is, is a traded commodity. And so there could be uh, price fluctuation. And uh, you also have an additional advantage that the reservoirs used uh, for hydro power generation also perform the additional job of collecting rainwater. And uh, since their response is fast, they increase the stability and reliability of power systems. And uh, it helps to fight climate changes because of very low amounts of greenhouse gas emissions. Thermal plants are uh, very polluting to the environment and uh, their sustainable, clean and cheap uh, energy source. They do have some disadvantages, very high capital cost. As I mentioned, the cost involved in the civil structure is really high and it's weather dependent, climate dependent. So if the monsoon periodically fails for a couple of years, then you, the areas which depend heavily on hydel powers will really be under trouble. And uh, you can lose some land and wildlife when the dams are constructed and it can cause some displacement of local population. These uh, disadvantages are more socio uh, rather than technical. Okay. So now operation of a system having both hydro and thermal plants is uh, far more complex as hydro plants have negligible operating cost but are required to operate under constraints of the water available in a given period of time. So you have some sort of a dynamic optimization problem. So the problem of minimizing the operating cost of a hydro uh, thermal system, you can view it as, again, the cost involved is the cost fuel cost of the thermal plant under an additional constraint, which is the water availability of the hydro plant. Clear? So my objective function would still be minimization of the cost. And I would add the water constraints, availability as a constraint. Let's see how we do it mathematically. So to illustrate the concept, uh, let's consider a very simple uh, system. And now just see what the system has and the notations. So J is the water inflow. Okay. So this is the reservoir. So reservoir basically has a storage and you must have some minimum storage. All the water available cannot be used for generation. You cannot drain the reservoir to zero. Okay. So we have denoted that by X and Q is a water discharge. So you have the water inflow and there'll be a discharge out from the hydro turbines. And the hydro 
hydro plant the generation we have designated it as pgh the active power generated by hh H for hydro and pd as usual is our demand and the thermal plant is generating a power of pg t so a simple enough system so now let's see how we model the system mathematically so we start with a mathematical formulation. So let's consider a period of operation, time period of operation. You take whatever you are interested in. It could be a day, a month, a week, or a year. And you may make the following assumptions. First, we know what is the storage of the reservoir at the beginning at the, and at the end of the period specified. So how do you know at the end of the period specified? Because you will say, I need to maintain minimum of 40% of the reservoir uh, capacity so you will know what to how much you can drain and uh, you need you know the water inflow to the reservoir because the water will be coming to the reservoir from some location from some river usually all the hydro, hydro plants are located where the rivers are located and so we know the water inflow and we know the load demand on the system that means it is a deterministic case Okay, these assumptions um, may not be accurate, but uh, they do not lead to any conceptual errors. So if any of these assumptions are not uh, satisfied or they are invalid, you can suitably modify the um, algorithm. So with these assumptions, we will build the algorithm. So what does it boil down to? My problem statement. So what I want to do is I have a period of operation T, let me say a day for simplicity. I will divide it into intervals, maybe equal intervals, say one hour or two hours or eight hour, eight hour blocks. So if I divide it into eight hour blocks, I'll have three periods. If I divide it into one hour blocks, I'll have 24 periods. So whatever it is. So I divide it into periods. The entire time period T, the period of operation, I divide it into smaller, what I call as the sub intervals. So now your problem statement boils down to determining the water discharge rate Q of T. That is the lowercase t is used for the sub interval. So at each sub interval, what is the discharge rate? So as to minimize the cost of thermal generation. So I have met two objectives. So first I'm determining what is the discharge rate to minimize the cost of thermal generation. So when I minimize the cost of thermal generation, automatically it will also give me what is the thermal generation required. Okay, so with this solution of this problem, I can get what is the hydel generation and what is the thermal generation. So my objective function is defined as follows. C of t is equal to integral zero to t so C of T is the cost. Uh, C PGT, we have already seen that in thermal plants, the cost of generation is a function of the power generated. It's a function of PG. If you recollect, we represented it as a quadratic function. C of I is equal to AI plus BI PGI plus CI PGI square. We have represented as a quadratic function. So over the entire time period, zero to T. Okay. And now let's see what are my constraints under which I'll be operating. So the first is power balance, which must always be met. So I have the, at any time, at, at any time, instant T, small T, lowercase T, PGT, that is the thermal generation, plus the hydel generation. This totally will give me the total generation minus the loss and the demand is equal to zero, which essentially means that your generation is equal to the total demand plus losses. Okay, so this is the first constraint and this is nothing but your power flow constraint, load flow equation you will basically get. Next, water availability. Okay, so I have the water available at time 
t at the end of the time period x dash is the water available at the end of the time period we are talking of the volume in this equation meter cubed that is the volume how much of volume is available minus the water available at the beginning okay so the difference will give you how much of water has been used minus the water in flow rate okay how much of water is flowing in and how much is discharged so we are considering so you just see how the, how the constraint is uh, developed so x dash of t is the water available at time t that is the storage plus the discharge is equal to the initial storage initial storage plus the inflow so the output what is what is the output and what is the stored what will at the end of the period what will that give you that will give you how much of water has been utilized so some of it has been utilized as discharge some of it has been utilized as storage okay that should be equal to what was available to you initially what was the storage and what is the inflow so very simple whatever water is coming in how much has gone out including the storage that's the equation simple enough if you just spend a few seconds trying to analyze what we mean so here you can see that in this equation x dash has a unit of meter cubed it is volume and uh, j and q are uh, rates so they have a unit of meter cubed per second okay next i have the third constraint is on hydro generation so very briefly let us see what is the power generated by a hydel plant it depends on what so the power generated by a hydel plant is a function of the storage and the discharge the storage and the discharge in general you can write pgh is equal to eta rho q g h eta is the efficiency of the system rho is the density of water in kg per meter cubed and in the absence of any data you can assume it to be 1000 kg per meter cubed which is the normal water uh, density and q is the water flow in meter cubed per second and g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the head of the water available in meters okay now so we have these three constraints what is the power generated what is the constraint on the water availability and what is the constraint on the power active power so instead of using integration we will use what is called as a discretization technique so what we do is the total time period t the total interval is divided into m sub intervals each of duration delta t so for simplicity you assume equal sub intervals delta t right so the reason is you assume that over an interval the values are constant so that means what if you take an interval of 1 hour we assume that over that 1 hour the water di discharge rate or uh, whatever we are assuming they all remain a constant so this is for ease of programming so now the problem so let us slightly reframe the mathematical uh, formulation now the problem is to minimize so i am going to replace the integration with summation minimize the cost over all the intervals so the interval starts at from 1 to m so cpg of t this is the cost in an interval m so i minimize the sum of the costs subject to we have the constraints the power balance everything the equation is the same only thing is i have put a superscript m to indicate that it is at an interval m is equal to 0 this must be satisfied at all sub intervals and the water continuity equation i have discretized so x dash m that is the storage or the water available in the current interval minus x dash m minus 1 that means in the previous interval so that will give me the difference in the availability minus jm you remember we had integral of jdt so that will become jm into delta t plus qm into delta t so here there is a difference in the units 
in this equation while x is the unit is meter cubed j and q have a unit of meter cubed per second so let's divide everything by delta t and write it as x of m minus x m minus 1 minus j m plus q m is equal to 0 okay and here remember even now the x are called as still called as storage which is the water available but it is in discharge units that means it's in the units of meter cubed per second so don't sit and worry storage means it has always in terms of volume so this is just how the problem is formulated okay so x naught and x m denote the storage at the beginning of the interval and at the end of the interval so this is the second constraint and the third constraint that is the hydro generation so uh, an empirical formula has been uh, derived for uh, the hydro generation and it's given by this you need not bother about the derivation since it's an empirical formula so pgh at an interval m is equal to h naught into 1 plus 0.5 e xm plus xm minus 1 we already saw that is x is the storage q is the discharge rho is the water density or the here in this case it is the non-effective discharge that is the water discharge needed to run hydro generator at no load you have to keep the turbine running okay even if you have not loaded the generator this requires a minimum amount of discharge which is non-effective okay that means it is not utilized in power generation so that is rho here and h naught is given by 9.81 into 10 to the power of minus 3 h naught dash where h naught dash is the basic water head we call it as the head corresponding to dead storage you must have it below that we do not generate the uh, hydro power okay e is called as the water head correction factor to account for head variation you know as you discharge and uh, if there is an inflow the head keeps varying so e is called as the water head correction factor so if you have seen the operation of any hydel plant you know that we, i don't keep opening and closing the gates drastically okay so over every time interval you can assume that the inflow and the discharge remain a constant so now we have formulated the objective function and the constraints now let us see what are the variables what are the dependent variables so the dependent variables are pgh right because it is dependent on what is the head what is the storage what is the discharge etc pgt because i have to decide what is how much to generate so it is a dependent variable and what is the water storage i require and the water discharge in one sub interval we'll see why it is one sub interval shortly okay and the independent variables are water discharges in all the sub intervals except one why that one i'll show you in the next slide because i have to satisfy a constraint availability okay so uh, we will just see that you have to have one independent one dependent variable and the rest independent if you want to satisfy that constraint we will see shortly so now you just see here this equation we saw okay this is the water availability constraint so xm is the storage xm minus 1 minus jm right so now i will add over all m intervals so when i add this over all m intervals finally see you you are, you are going to write this equation for every value of m right so i will have xm minus x naught because the intermediate x minus 1 will get cancelled in the two subsequent equations plus minus so j of m i have so it will be sigma j of m over all the m intervals and sigma q of m over all the m intervals okay so now if you see here for this equation to be satisfied here my controllable variable is q independent variable is q and xm is fixed i know the final storage i know the initial storage and i know the discharge rates uh, okay that is the inflow j is the inflow rates i know 
these are all not under my control these are all not controllable parameters so i cannot make them independent they are all fixed okay so xm will depend on whatever what is the minimum head i require x not will depend on the available water and the reservoir capacity and the inflow again will depend on the water availability so they are all not under my control the discharge is under my control okay so if you look at this equation this last term i had i have m discharges they are controlled but if i independently specify all of them then this total cannot be satisfied i can't make all of them as an independent variable for example let me give you a simple example supposing you have x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0 right then i have to satisfy i have to satisfy x1 is equal to minus of x2 plus x3 i can't independently specify x1 x2 x3 and say that the sum will be equal to 0 are you getting my point so here that is precisely what i have i just have a summation okay i cannot independently specify all the parameters so for simplicity we will assume q1 to be the dependent variable and discharge at other intervals to be independent that means i will solve for q's at all the intervals and using that i will calculate q1 which essentially means that i will at the end of the solution i will know what is the discharge for all the sub intervals so if i substitute one here in this equation if i substitute one okay what do i get so i get q1 i let me take from here q1 i'll get q1 is equal to x not so this will go to the right hand side x not minus xm here in this equation x not minus xm so this will become plus plus jm and here i am only taking q1 so minus q from m to 2 to m so if i determine this last term these are all known anyway if i determine all these last term then i can find out what is q1 clear so if i independently determine q1 also this equation will get violated i can't arbitrarily give a value okay so now you understood why one of the discharges has to be dependent and only m minus 1 qs you can make it independent so now our problem boils down to this how do i determine the all these discharges q of m in the sub intervals from m to 2 to the final interval number of intervals and then calculate q1 how do i determine it so that the cost of the thermal generation is minimized subject to i know how much i can generate um, by the heidel plant clear i think the mathematical formulation is clear so now let us look at the algorithm how i do it step by step okay so we come back to our good old lagrange function method so i have three sets of constraints okay so uh, you know that in the lagrange method the constraints are absorbed into the objective function so i take l is equal to sigma cpgt of m this is my uh, original objective function minus lambda 1m and this is my first constraint plus lambda 2m this is my second constraint on water availability plus lambda 3m this is my hydro power constraint so this is my lagrange function okay now what we do we equate all the partial derivatives with respect to the dependent variables to zero so what are the dependent variables we saw pgh pgt and then q1 okay so we will see so the first so do l by do pgt of m so let's just see here okay now you see supposing you differentiate this with respect to pgt of m that is one particular value of m so what do i get here this is dependent so i'll get do c by do pgt of m so i get one term here minus lambda 1 of m lambda 1 of m and uh, here do pgt of m so when i differentiate this i get a 1 i get a 1 and pgh 
is not dependent on PGT. The Heidel power generation is not dependent on PGT. So this differentiation will give me zero. And this is the loss. The loss depends on PGT, right? The loss is dependent on all the generations, both thermal and Heidel. So this term will give me do PLM by do PG, do PL at, at M. M. M here is the interval divided by do PG. Okay, so I'll have the term here. Now this is completely to do with discharge. It is only the hydral constraint. So this will not depend on, on the thermal generation. And this is again hydral generation. So this will also not depend on the thermal generation. So if you just see here, so do L by do PGT of M will depend on do C PGT of M by D PGT of M minus lambda one M. So this is the expression. So from this, I, I can know what is do, DC by the derivative of the cost with respect to PGT. So I will be using this equation, I have called it as one, to solve for lambda one of M at all the sub intervals. I will use this to solve the lambda one, the Lagrangian multipliers at all the sub intervals. Next, next what do I have to do? I want to take the derivative of the Lagrangian function with respect to PGH, the hydral generation. So this is thermal, so this will not give me uh, anything. So I have here PGH, so I have minus lambda one M, and here I have uh, PGH here. So I'll get do PG, here I'll get a one here, and PL will also be dependent on PG, so I'll get minus do PL by do PGH, Okay, and this is not dependent on the generation. This is only discharges. And now here, all this PGH is not there. Whereas here, I'll get a one. So I'll get plus lambda three of M. So lambda one of M and lambda three of M will affect my second derivative. So do L by do PGH lambda three of M minus lambda one of M. Same like this you get here. I have already computed lambda one of M, so I can use this equation to compute lambda three of M. So when we do a numerical uh, problem, you will understand how to do the solution. So this is my second one. Now, the third one I'm going to differentiate with respect to do X of M. So here I have X of M. So here I'll have lambda two of M. And when I differentiate with respect to x of m, I get a 1 uh, here. And then I have an x of m term here also. So this will also affect my uh, differentiation. So I get lambda 2 of m minus lambda 2 m plus 1. Okay. Minus lambda 3 of m. 0 0.5 h naught e to the power of q m minus rho. Minus. So you must be wondering what is this m plus 1. You just see here. In this term, I have x of m minus x of m minus 1, right? Now, I want to take the derivative of this Lagrange with respect to x of m. So, when x, x, it's when equal to m, all these will not come into picture. So, I'll have lambda 2 of m, right? Now, when the next, I get, you know, m becomes, is incremented by 1. This m minus 1 will become m. So I need to consider that also. So that is how you get these terms, m plus one and m plus one. Please work it out, please work it out. So now what we do with this equation is, I solve for lambda two of m, for all m except m is equal to one. Remember my discharge, one discharge is not independent. It is a dependent variable. So these three equations I solve. And finally I have, x of m minus, this is my general equation. So by substituting m equal to one, I get x of one is equal to x naught plus j one minus q one. And I take the Lagrange function and exclusively for m equal to one, and I get this, okay, this derivative, and I solve this for lambda two of one. Right? So this is how I formulate the mathematical problem. 
Now the gradient. So when do you, you know, in all the Lagrange uh, methods, you have to use the gradient and when the gradient is less than a threshold, you stop the solution. So I have to take the gradient with respect to my independent variable. What is my independent variable here? It is my all my discharges except Q1. So you take the derivative of the Lagrange function with respect to Q of M. So now let's see where Q of M features. Yes, I have a Q of M here. So it will be lambda 2 of M. Derivative of Q of M will be 1 plus I have here lambda 3 of M and all these are constants minus H naught 1 plus 0.5 E all this and again I have a QM here. So these two terms will contribute to the gradient. Remember when you are talking of the gradient you are talking of the derivative of the Lagrangian function with respect to the independent variable. So I will get la do yeah, la do lambda uh, do L by do Q of M for all M except one because one is a dependent not an independent variable lambda 2 of M this is from the second term plus minus or minus lambda 3 of M H naught and all these terms okay so when the gradient vector is below a threshold the solution is reached so I uh, suggest all of you please write down the Lagrange function and do the derivative simple derivative and you can check out with what we have done. So now I have all my equations. Let me quickly present you the algorithm. So what do I do? Assume initial values for discharges in all the subintervals except m equal to 1. Supposing you divide the day into four periods, each of six periods, six hours. Let us say my total time period t is one day. So I divide it into four subintervals, okay, of six hours. So my m is four. Right. So now I make some assumption Q2, Q3, Q4, Q1 I don't assume, Q2, Q3, Q4 I assume. You can't arbitrarily assume, huh? you know the water condition, you have some data. So based on that make a reasonable assumption. And then you calculate PGH of M, PGT of M, XM and Q1. You can calculate all this, you have formula for all this. Using that you uh, and the equations we have derived, calculate the Lagrange multipliers. So that is lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. Then obtain the gradient vector. Okay. And uh, for optimal solution, this gradient vector should be below a threshold. If all, the, all of them are equal to 0, uh, within a specified tolerance, your solution is reached. If not, update your discharges. How do I update? Q nu is equal to Q old minus some multiplier into the gradient vector. This is a standard updation formula. We have seen it in many places for Lagrange method. Okay, so you update the discharges and again go to step two. That is again calculate, go on doing it till your gradient vector is less than a specified value. Clear? So this is how you mathematically formulate the problem of a hydrothermal plant. In the next session, I will show you a mathematical example. Thank you.